Hey, what's up guys, it's Zach here, and today I'm going to show you how to bounce multiple files out of Cubase automatically. Check it out. In order to do this, we need to make a macro. Open up Cubase and open a project that you want to export the audio events from. Open your key commands window. Near the bottom you will see a button called Show Macros. Click on that button to open up the macro window. Add a new macro. I'm going to call it Bounce Events. Up at the top, search for the name of the macro and give it a key command that we will use to activate it. I set mine to Control shift b Now we will want to add six commands. Transport, locate next event. Transport, set left locator. Transport, locate next event. Transport, set right locator. File, export audio mixdown. Audio export, perform audio export. What this sequence of commands will do is select your next event to the right. Set your export region or locators to the selected event, open the export audio mixdown window, and export the selected event. For this to work correctly, you must do two things. Make sure that the events you want to export have no edits in them. Use the glue tool to glue them all together. Make sure that all audio tracks are selected that contain the audio that you want to bounce, and that no audio events are selected. Let's try it out in real time. Okay, great, it works. Well, for one event. In order to bounce out multiple events at once, we must investigate the guts of Cubase. It is important to follow this part carefully. If you are a Macintosh user, please skip to 3.30 where this is explained. First, save the key command preset containing your macro. I'll name mine Bounce Events, but you can call yours whatever you want. Open your audio export page. Click on the arrow to the right of the name box and make sure that the auto update name is checked. This is important so that Cubase automatically creates each file with a unique name as to not run into naming conflicts. Next, in your start menu, type percent app data percent and press enter. Open your Steinberg folder, open the Cubase folder with the same name as your current version, open presets, open key commands, and find the key command preset that you just saved. Right click on it and select open with notepad. Scroll down in notepad until you find the location where your bounce events macro is stored. There you will see each of its commands. Starting from the open alligator bracket forward slash item close alligator bracket. Highlight everything until you see the open alligator bracket item closed alligator bracket. Now you will want to copy and paste this for as many audio events that you want to bounce out of your session. I'm going to duplicate it 100 times for the additional headroom. Save the edited file with the .xml extension and go back to Cubase. If you reload your preset and open the macro we just created, you will notice that the commands we duplicated have been added to the macro. Let's test it out. It works. At this point, I'm going to force close Cubase as I'm going to get 93 error messages telling me that there's nothing left to bounce out. Unfortunately, I haven't figured out a way around this. If I do, I will make an update video with the improved functionality. If this isn't working for you, don't worry. When duplicating your macros using Notepad, it is very easy to mess up lines of code or not saving codes as a .xml file or to the correct folder. It actually happened to me a handful of times while I was making this tutorial. If you are still having difficulties, try visiting my website where you can find a better breakdown of this tutorial. The link is in the video description. Now for Mac users. To find where your key commands files are saved, open up your explorer and go to your username slash library slash preferences and locate the folder which is named the same as your Cubase version. Please note, since Mac OS X 10.7 Lion, the user's library folder is hidden. You can now access it in the menu bar of Mac OS X. Click on Go. While the Go menu is opened, hold down Alt or the Option key, and it will show you the correct library entry. Once you have located your XML file, open it with Text Editor. Skip back in the video to 136, as the remaining steps to complete this tutorial are the same. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this helps speeds up your bouncing process. And hey, if you didn't like this video, well, I mean, that's too bad. I have just launched a new website where you can find useful resources for my audio tutorials as well as creative packs. Right now everything is free, so check it out and let me know what you think. Thanks guys, we'll see you next time.